Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in On One Photo Raw 2021 and I'm just having a go at a waterfall that I took here in Austin. And uh, this is this photo, I like the waterfall, I like the flow of the water, I think it looks fantastic. I like the scene, I like the rocks, but there's no color, it's totally boring. Uh, and what I want to do is just turn it into something that I find a bit more visually impactful. Let's take a look at it. This is the photo. I have cropped it and removed a few spots. But I mean, that's my base photo. It's, um, like I said, the flow of the water is nice. I really love the look of the waterfall, but the colors here are kind of muted brown and yellow. And so I'm gonna make this a beautiful black and white, just to really just kind of jump off the screen, uh, at least in my opinion. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and get into that. The first thing I'm gonna do is get a little bit of contrast here in the develop tab. I'm gonna bump the midtones just a tiny bit and also, uh, bump the shadows a little bit, and I kind of started like that. Um, that kind of brightened the photo up, which I liked. Um, and then the temperature and the tint, all that's fine. Everything else is fine. Again, this is a fairly simple, straightforward edit. And I've said this in other recent videos. You know, I do a, a lot of videos where I have a lot of steps, and I use all these masks and all these powerful tools, and I want and I love to do it. And that's what I like so much about the product. But sometimes simple is best, and this one's going to be fairly simple. So. The next thing I do is, because I knew I was gonna make a black and white, is just go ahead and get the black and white filter and stick it on there because like if I know I'm gonna make a monochrome, I just go ahead and do that right away so that I can just start um, thinking about it in monochrome, if that makes sense. If I leave it in color and make up a bunch of adjustments and then decide later you know, to make it monochrome, I don't know, I'm thinking about it for a long time as color and that, I don't know, it doesn't work the same for me. I don't know if I can explain it very well. Now, if you remember looking at the base photo, there's some muted earth tones, right? So kind of that brown, yellow, there's a little bit of green as well. Uh, and by the way, there's a little bit, just a tiny, tiny twinge of blue in some of that water. So we're gonna play with that. So the yellow, um, this is the luminance of those color channels. I'm gonna bring that yellow down all the way and I'm gonna bring that blue up all the way. So as you can see, I basically darkened some of the, um, uh, like the rock, if you will, and kind of brighten the water, for lack of a better word. So that's that's helped me a little bit there. But I knew I wanted to really make that water pop and really create a more dramatic monochrome, which is kind of where I was at this point in my thinking. And so I thought, well, tone enhancer is going to be good because I can really adjust things there. So I went in for a little bit more contrast because I was like, all right, I want the dark and the light to be more significantly different, which is contrast, right? So that's why I lifted contrast. I went ahead and lifted the highlights, which isn't something I do a lot in photos, but in this case, I thought, all right, I'm trying to bring those whites up. And so uh, I'm gonna do that, and then I'm gonna pull the shadows down. And you may be wondering, hey, Jim, you're, you're you know pulling shadows down, but over here on the develop tab, you lifted mid-tones and shadows. And honestly, that's just because at the time, I didn't know what I was doing with the photo, and so I was kind of playing with the light over here to get better visibility across the photo. And then, as I often do, a filter or two later, I'll go back and do something that's completely opposite of what I did in the beginning. So um, this is not always an efficient workflow that I'm sharing, it's just my actual workflow. I'm not saying this is the fast way to the end zone, I'm just saying this is my meandering path through a creative garden. I don't know, my analogies are getting mixed here, but you get the point. Um, it's not a straight line, this creative uh, journey that I go on with my photos. So now that I've done that, I'm taking shadows and I'm going all the way to 100, or excuse me, not shadows, whites. And that really popped those, and that's what I was looking for. But of course, everything else is kind of darker now, so we're gonna work on that here in a minute. But those whites really, really are popping now, which I love. So um, I could come here and pull shadows down uh, and, and get a nice result, uh, but I'm gonna leave shadows where I had it, which was like a negative 25 or something. So something about like that, and I'm gonna add a vignette. But the first thing I wanted to do, and this was something I, I really don't ever do, especially with waterfalls, uh, and that is in Tone Enhancer, what I did is I added about a 15 on detail. So let me get to that 15. And on clarity, I bumped that up to about a 25. And so if you look at the water, it's really creating a little bit more uh, texture and separation of all the different streams when I did that. So if I reset clarity, you can see there it is before, and there it is with the 25, which I think looks better. And if I reset the detail, there it is before, and then if I reclick to 15, there it is again. So those two little moves, I think really allowed me to kind of hone in on the water and the motion and create a bit more um, 
I don't know, a bit more impact with the motion of the water. And, and to be clear, like I love like 10 stop filters and two minute long exposures where it's just this long silky water. This is not one of those. Uh, this one, in fact, is, let's look here, that's seven tenths of a second at uh, F32. So, uh, you know, not a, uh, not a super long exposure, just, you know, less than a second, but I got a nice little flow. But this detail and clarity move, I think really gave it a little bit more umph, a little bit more life, and I really like that. Uh, then I came in here, and this is where I got the vignette, as I was talking about, because again, going for dramatic black and white, I don't care about all those other sides of the photo being visible. So in this case, I went for their big softy, which I think looks great here. Um, however, I did reduce the size to about uh, a 20, uh, and so it's, it looked basically like that. So now I've got a lot of separation between the white, you know, the lights and the darks, the whites and the blacks. And that's what I'm doing. And, you know, this is where, and, and this is not a, a, a um, what am I trying to say? Um, this is where you, I look at a photo and I start to think, that's kind of a fine art photo. When you have a really dramatic black and white, and I think a long exposure and high contrast, that starts to get me in the realm of thinking this is like a fine art photo. What I don't want to say is, hey, I'm a fine artist, uh, and, uh, you know, this is a great photo. I think it's an okay photo. I like the photo, but anyway... My point is this kind of look is what I often see in a what's called a fine art photo. So just FYI, by the way, if you're curious about what I think about fine arts, I actually did a video a long time ago. I'll try to link it there where I discussed about uh, fine art photos and what they are just as an aside. I just remembered that. Um, anyway, so that was vignette and that really got me where I was and I was done until I started to make this video and then I thought, you know what? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go back over here because what I didn't do is play with the whites and blacks. And so, again, I'm just kind of experimenting. I did play with blacks and whites over here in the effects tab uh, in Tone Enhancer, right? So you may remember that down here. I did some of that work. But you've also got whites and blacks here in the Develop tab. And so I came over here and I just thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pull those whites up a little bit more and see how they look. So I got to about 25 and then the blacks, I thought, you know, I'm going to pull them down just a little bit more. And I got to about a negative 15, and I really like that. I just think that stands out. I think it's a very impactful photo. I mean, it's clear that, hey, this is a waterfall. And other than the water and the motion of the water, it's a fairly empty scene. There's not a lot going on. So I've purposefully darkened all the edges, which is a lot of shadow work, contrast, and vignette. And then I purposely brightened the center, which is highlights and whites and also that contrast. And so these things have really allowed me to create this look, which I really like. And that's effectively it. So if I hit uh, the reset button, if you will, turn the preview off that's what the photo looked like kind of brown kind of yucky really muted really just a, almost a faded looking photo and i thought you know i like the flow of the water but god the rest of it is just kind of drive me nuts it's just ugly to be honest um it's a beautiful waterfall area when we have water here in austin it's not far from my house but the surrounding scenery it just looks like texas it's not necessarily like you know, it's not like the Rocky Mountains or Canada or Oregon where you have these stunning waterfalls and all this greenery, which I would be playing up in a photo like this. Instead, I'm trying to mute it all. And so doing all the different mute moves that I did, I was able to mute it and hide it. So one other uh, view here is the sliding before and after. You can see there's some lens correction that's come into play as well. But for me, it was really uh, a lot of contrast, a lot of whites and blacks, you know, tone management, if you will. And then also that little pop of detail and clarity in the water there, I think really helped bring that waterfall to life. That's my workflow. I hope it gives you some ideas using On One on your own photos. Thanks for watching, my friends. I really appreciate it. I hope you're doing well. Stay safe. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you in the next video. And adios.